Welcome to Speak English Podcast with your host, Georgiana. The podcast that will help you to speak English fluently with no grammar and no textbooks. Hi, everybody. I am Georgiana, your English teacher and founder of SpeakEnglishPodcast.com. My mission is to help you to speak English fluently. Today, we will look at some English words that are very difficult to pronounce. And with a point of view lesson, you will improve your English grammar without memorizing any boring rules. Before getting started, visit my website, speakenglishpodcast.com, and get the transcript for free. Also, let me say that I'm really happy because this is episode number 200. It's been five years since I launched the first episode of the Speak English Now podcast. Thank you so much for your support and for sharing the podcast with your friends and families. Okay, let's start. Number one. Cavalry and Calvary. People often confuse cavalry, armed forces on horseback, with cavalry, an experience of extreme suffering, especially mental suffering. We call metathesis the change of one or more sounds within a word. And yes, metathesis is also a hard word to pronounce. Anyway, let's practice the two words a little bit. Listen and repeat after me. Cavalry. 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 Calvary. 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 Number two. Comfortable or comfortable and vegetable or vegetable. These two words are the most difficult for my students to pronounce. Most Spanish speakers pronounce comfortable and vegetable as comfortable or vegetable. And I guess it's because both words end in table. So let's practice the two words a little bit. Listen and repeat. Comfortable. 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 Vegetable. 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 Number three. Another word that my students find difficult to pronounce is deteriorate. Let's practice it for a bit. Listen and repeat after me. Deteriorate. 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 Number four, explicit. Don't worry, 
Almost everyone sounds a little funny when they pronounce the word explicit. Let's practice it. Explicit. 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 Number five. Exponentially or exponentially. Yes, I understand you perfectly. Sometimes exponentially gets exponentially harder to say the more you try to say it. Let's practice this word. Listen and repeat after me. Exponentially. 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 Or exponentially. 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 That's all for today. I hope you had a good time practicing these complex words. Next week, we will practice more of these difficult words in English. By the way, if you want to know how to speak English using the right techniques, visit speakenglishpodcast.com and subscribe to my mailing list. I will send you my five golden rules to speak English fluently, and it's completely free. Okay, now it's time for you to learn grammar in context with a point of view story. I'll tell you a short story more than one time. Every time, I'll change a grammar point. I can change the tense or the person. This way, you'll notice the changes in context. Okay, let's start. Let's listen to the story in the present tense in the first person. Hi, I'm Tom, and I'm reflecting on my life in my office. I am delighted. I have a comfortable life. You could even say I am living in a fairy tale. I have a high salary few responsibilities, and it seems like nothing wrong ever happens to me. When I talk to customers, I explain irrelevant details and sometimes even get too explicit. However, their relationship with customers never seems to deteriorate. It improves exponentially, and my colleagues are very envious of me. Besides, I always give everyone advice on how to live, but I never act on any of it. I think to myself, rules for thee, but not for me. While I'm pondering on this, a strange noise sounds. Oh no, it's the alarm clock. It was all a dream. It turns out, that I have a normal job, just like everyone else. I am not living in a fairy tale, but my life seems more like a Calvary. Let's listen to the same story in the past tense, in the third person singular. Tom was in his office reflecting on his life. He was delighted. He lived a comfortable life. You could even say he was living in a fairy tale. He had a high salary, few responsibilities, and it seemed like nothing wrong ever happened to him. When he talked to customers, he explained irrelevant details and sometimes even got too explicit. However, their relationship with customers 
never deteriorated. It improved exponentially, and his colleagues were very envious of Tom. Besides, he always gave everyone advice on how to live, but he never acted on any of it. He thought to himself, "Rules for thee, but not for me." While he was pondering all this, a strange noise sounded. Oh no! It's the alarm clock. It was all a dream. It turned out that Tom had a normal job, just like everyone else. He was not living in a fairy tale, but his life seemed more like a Calvary. Okay, let's listen to the same story in the third person plural. Tom and Alice. Were in their office, reflecting on their lives. They were delighted. They both lived a comfortable life. You could even say they were living in a fairy tale. They had a high salary, few responsibilities, and it seemed like nothing wrong ever happened to them. When they talked to customers, they explained. Irrelevant details, and sometimes even got too explicit. However, their relationship with customers never deteriorated; it improved exponentially, and their colleagues were very envious of Tom and Alice. Besides, they always gave everyone advice on how to live, but they. Never acted on any of it. They thought to themselves, "Rules for thee, but not for me." While they were pondering all this, a strange noise sounded. Oh no! It's the alarm clock. It was all a dream. It turned out that both Tom and Alice had a normal job, just like everyone else. They were not living in a fairy tale, but their lives seemed more like a Calvary. Okay, it's the end of this short lesson. As you can see, just by changing the point of view of the story, you can learn grammar in context. It is one of the techniques that I use in my premium courses. I recommend you to take a look at speakenglishpodcast.com/courses. Okay, we have reached the end of this episode. Remember to listen to it several times. It will help you with your English. Do you know how you can help me? You can share the podcast with your friends and family. Tell them. To go to speakenglishpodcast.com and get my free mini course. That would mean a lot to me. Thanks. See you soon. Bye bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast.com.